and welcome back to the Colin McClay channel. Today I'm going to do something for beginners. I'm going to show you what you can use instead of normal polymer clay tools today and I'm going to make something to show how easy it is to substitute expensive tools for something that you may have around the home. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so what I've got here is an, a very mixed array of tools. These are all the things I normally use, um, and sort of obviously the cutters and things. And then on this side are things that you can use to substitute. You'll be quite surprised as to what these can turn into. So, but on this side here, these are not genuine sort of uh, polymer clay tools, but they're all things that you can use, of course, apart from these. So I'm gonna show you what I normally use, and then I'm gonna move on and show you what I can use instead. So here we go. Okay, so there is one thing that you can't substitute with a lot of anything else, um, and that is a tissue blade. The reason for that is because it is very bendy and very, very sharp. So moving on, all of the other tools that I've got here are a majority of dotting tools. So for example, these ones, and the main ones that I use on my videos are these ones. These are by Fima Professional and they're by Stadler. Absolutely great. They're sculpting tools. Um, so basically they literally, as it sounds, um, they smooth and you can make sort of point, blunt points in clay as well. So they're really good. Dotting tools are really important if you're doing fine work. So I've got some very, very fine dotting tools here. Um, and then I've got some slightly bigger ones here. Um, I've got one by FIMO Professional, which is the same as the other ones that I showed you there. This one actually on the end has quite an interesting um, sort of carving tool. So with this one, you'd be able to sort of carve out parts of the FIMO like you would do in, in pottery. And you can actually just scoop out parts as you saw fit really. Um, so they're quite a good sculpting tool. Now with these three, these are the ones I use quite often. This is a small dotting tool a medium dotting tool so they're the two different dots that you would be able to get with those and then this one I have is the Fima professional one and that is a larger dotting tool on there so it does that sort of shape on one side and then it has a different shape on the other which is really handy don't find that very often so I do believe that Fima professional tools come in a pack of three um, so I think you would get all of these these three together um, I do recommend those. Um, and these ones here are from Sculpey Studio. And as, as you see on a lot of my videos, I don't make anything without these. These are brilliant. Um, they're very light um, and obviously slightly heavier on one side because of the metal, um, but they're great for anything that you can do really. So they're those ones. Um, I'll just sort of go through these ones briefly because they're all really self-explanatory, apart from this one. This is again a Fimo professional tool and it's absolutely fabulous. So basically what this will do is drill, or hand drill, should I say, through um, Fimo. So if you've got a hard piece of uh, clay, once it's been in the oven and you want to put a hole in it for either earrings or something like that, um, you can then just drill a, and it will drill a really nice neat hole as well. So that's really good. In soft clay, you can still do the same thing um, and it will pull out the clay as you've brought it down and then bring it back up again. And you can do the same. And it does actually drill a um, mark, a, a very, very neat hole all the way through. And as you can see, it comes out the other end perfectly. Um, so if you are looking for something that will put a really easy hole inside clay, this is your tool. This is very, very good for that. And again, this is FIMO Professional. On the other end of this tool is like a scoop. Um, I've not used this for any sort of sculpting before, but I find it very helpful with glitter. So you would scoop it up basically and just pop it on. So that's very good and very handy for that. Okay, moving on. I've got some metal tools here. I much prefer metal tools to any normal, um, say wooden tools that you can get. I find metal tools are a lot better for putting good marks in clay um, and generally sort of making your life easier. This one also is one of my favourites. It's a slightly deeper scoop and I always use this for uh, glitter as well. But sometimes mica powder is really great for that because you can get it in the right place if you've got a little scoop. Three other things that I always use are, this is a um, this is by Herberhard Faber. So this is a FIMO, an actual branded FIMO tool. It's very old now, but I, it's very good for making blunt marks in polymer clay so for example a blunt mark would be something that 
isn't particularly sharp. And the other two things I use is a good weighted uh, craft blade. Now by weighted I mean they're quite heavy so they, they sit nicely in your hand and it's easier to make um, sort of marks in things or trim off something if you've got a good weighted knife. So that's one of the things that I always look for and always use. And then lastly a paintbrush. You can use any type of paintbrush and I use this for mica powder. Um, I recommend that rather than get your hands all messy. And quite often if you're doing something with mica powder you want it in a certain place so paintbrushes really really handy to have so they're the main tools that i would normally use what i'm actually going to do today is something a bit different i'm going to make something with none of my normal tools except for my tissue blade because as i said i can't substitute that anywhere uh, but i'm going to make something with this and show you what you can do with these things as well so what i'm going to do now to prove my theory that you can make polymer clay things with absolutely anything is i'm going to make uh, a little flower and I'm going to use these tools here. Now what I've got here is a biro, or a couple of biros, an insert to a biro, a pencil, a pen, and this is a mini grater. I believe it's for garlic or something like that. I'm not a cook, so I, I don't like cooking. So, um, so yeah, I think that's what this is for garlic or herbs or something like that. Obviously we all know what a spoon is. <laughs> then we've got like a little key ring thing here and with some balls on it. Um, then I've got a lid of a perfume or like a body spray and a different lid here and then some cocktail sticks. So I'm going to prove with all this that you can come up with something really cool with polymer clay. So here we go. Now this is quite an older clay. Um, it, is a, it is a soft brand um, but I've had it for quite some time. So the way I recommend to condition clay um, it's slightly older is by chopping up. Add a tiny bit of baby oil. And once you've got it nice and fine and chopped, press together. Now this has gone very very sticky and it's not going to be as fun to work with if it's like this. So I do have a trick, if you pop this in some paper, just normal printer paper, pop it in the middle and then press and keep going until some of the plasticizers and uh, oils have come out of the clay and you'll find that it's not quite so sticky. Okay, so I've got the yellow and the white ready. So the yellow is going to become the middle part of the flower. Okay, so I've just rolled it out into a long shape and I'm just going to cut it in roughly five equal pieces, which is what I've done here. And then I'm going to roll them up into a ball. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm just going to show you this block here. Now the way I test if a block is very, very hard um, is I pick it up and just press in the corners and this one really isn't budging at all. So I know this one's going to be quite hard. It is fine well effect, but I happen to know that this is quite an old block. Um, so I'm just going to show you what you can do with this. So with an old block of FIMO that's not been conditioned, take the grater and literally just break pieces like that and what that means and what you will get is a nice shredded very fine pieces of clay which then in turn can be mixed into a ball of unbaked clay that's softened mix it up and you have a nice sparkle throughout the piece of clay that you've got okay there's the yellow ball for the middle and I'm just going to make these into petals. So you make it into a long sort of shape. Make sure it's a little bit bigger in the middle and thinner on the outside. 
and then literally turn and bend and fold into the middle and that's the petal shape and pop it on do the next ones Okay, so the next step, I'd normally be using my dotting tool um, to make the dents in the uh, middle yellow bit, but instead I'm going to use the inside of the pen. It doesn't actually work, so that's good. <laughs> I think it's uh, one of the old ones that I've got in my drawer here. So I'm just gonna use it as I would do my dotting tool. It's really important to create texture before you put any type of mica powder on um, because it, it, the mica powder shows up brilliantly so if you put mica powder on first it won't actually it will make the um, the area a different color um, but I think it's important to have a bit of texture there um, so it looks absolutely brilliant so I'm just putting the texture on the yellow bit here and it's looking absolutely great so for a pen for a middle of a pen piece, I think it's done a fab job. Okay, so further decorations can be done on this, um, and I'm going to use the pen for this. You can always check out on a spare piece of FIMO exactly what it, the mark will look like before you put it on. Have a quick look to think where it could go and where you think it would look nice. I'm going to pop it in the bottom here. Okay, now I've done that, just check the, the markings on this piece of um, clay here and I think that will work quite well. So I'm just going to pop a mark here and then one either side and continue that round. And then lastly I'm just going to go back to this one and make some bigger holes and just drag that in a little bit to give the petal a bit more of a shape so I'm making a hole and then pushing the clay towards the yellow part just to give it a bit more depth there and I think that actually has done a really great job there okay now the other way you could make a, a middle part is leaving it smooth and then using the little grater to grate off some more like this and then gently roll up the soft clay with the unconditioned clay and you have quite a really good texture and then for any extras that you want you just pick them up off the tile there and then with that you've got a little bit of texture there and it's quite an interesting look to it you can always do that also with uh, baked clay as well so if you've got something that hasn't worked out so well and you want to make to make use of it um, you could actually um, take it to this and actually crumble it right down and then mix it into clay it will it will still stay hard um, but it'll be in sort of fine shards and you, you'd be able to make some sort of ornament out of it or something like that or pop it into jewellery so it's, there's a way of using it. Okay so I'm not going to use mica powders I'm going to show you something else that you can use instead of mica powders. So this is a cheap little cheap set or a big cheap set of eyeshadow and it's literally really great to use on polymer clay so I'm going to pick a nice coordinating colour perhaps this yellow here just dabble very lightly over this middle part here and then for a bit of shimmer this gold on the top okay, I'm just going to add some white and this is the same eyeshadow on the inside so a little bit of shimmer there okay, so I've got some glitter 
Unfortunately, you can't substitute glitter for anything else, or vice versa. So I am using glitter. I'm just going to get my little scoop here and then just pop that in the middle here. Some of it will go into the holes, some of it will rest on the outside. I think that's half of the joy of it really and just seeing where it can go. And it, it picks up the light as well, so that's quite nice like that. And then I've got some fairy dust here. I use that, this is quite a fine glitter, and I use that quite often on white because I really think it looks pretty. So, and again, in my usual style, I'm just going to pop it on in highlighted spots and not all over. I am quite generous with glitter, as you'll probably notice in a lot of my videos. I just love this stuff, I can't help it. Okay, and lastly, I'm just going to make some little marks some little bits of decoration and then this is with the pencil I'm just going to use the brush and pick up as much as that glitter as possible onto the actual flower not waste any okay you can also use the flower for quite a good decoration actually so I'm just going to show you how you can easily make it um, for a little hair clip so make a base about like this and then open up the clip and pop it onto the middle getting the imprint of it really well and this helps fix it on afterwards use the tissue blade to lift it get it into the roughly the shape you want it to be in doesn't have to be perfect and then make the flower so obviously this one's going to be very very tiny in comparison I'm just going to make some marks here and then that's three along here and then just some little dots inside here on the edge of the petals this time to go all the way around the outside and keep the design nice and simple. And now let's add some glitter. So I've just got some other colours here, I've got a little bit of green and to decorate the little hair clip I'm just going to make the little stalk to go with it. So just gently stretching it out a little bit. I'm not going to use any tools because I want to show how easy it is to do it without it really. And then pinch the end a little bit and make a little twirl.
So as you saw there, I've just added some smaller flowers, a little bit of wine there through the middle, and that is the little hair clip. All, this, all of this hair clip can go in the oven, um, and then once it's hardened, it can be taken off the back here, and then just glued back on, and it stays put. And then this is going to be a little magnet. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven now, and we'll see how it comes out. I think the only thing I've got left to use now is the spoon and with this you can use it with polymer clay and I've just got some scrap here and you can actually use it to flatten out the clay. Obviously it is going to be a little, a little bit harder as if you had a rolling pin but I would do it in exactly the same way. Pressing it outwards like this, turning it over and then using a sort of a rocking motion to get that nice and flat and obviously a roller is the best thing uh, but if you don't have a roller and you want to use something else this is one of my ideas you can obviously also use an acrylic sheet as well to give that a good flatten and press down And that works really well. Let's stretch that out a bit. Give it a bit more of a flatten. This is a good way of smoothing the clay out as well, using it like this, and then getting a good even base. Okay, once you've done that, instead of using a normal cutter, I'm going to use the lid of a body spray. Use it in the same way, press, twist a little bit. Now it is going to be a bit more blunt because obviously I was using a metal clay shape before and this is plastic so it is going to have more of a blunt edge. Going to use a tissue blade to lift and there's your circle there you have it I'm just going to show you with a smaller one this has got more of a sharp sort of edging to it although it is still plastic so it may not go sharply through the clay I'm just going to show you press it down and you can see through this one as well so that's quite handy twist it and then lift And these are just little tips to show you how to use different tools with polymer clay. I hope you found this tutorial interesting. I had a lot of fun actually trying to find things around the house that was just as good as the tools and it's so easy. So the things I made were this little flower here and this is going to be a little magnet for my fridge and as you can see even without any tools whatsoever it was actually really quite easy to make something that looked just as great and then the other thing that I made was this little flower clip perfectly couldn't see any problems with making that without all of the normal tools so if you are starting to make things from polymer clay don't go out and buy loads of expensive tools first see how you feel with things see what works for you find an old pen find something with a lid on that you quite like the pattern of or if you've got any buttons or anything fancy like that old jewelry old costume jewelry give it a try stamp away and see what you can find I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. It's still going up and I'm still fascinated by this. I'd like to know um, your thoughts on what I make and if you would like to see anything in the future. If you're struggling with something to make and you've been asked to make it, let me know and I'll see if I can help you with a tutorial. And as always, see you again soon. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget.